Even though this really is unlike any of my regular content, if you watched any of my other videos, then you would probably know of the heavy use of Persona music. And yeah, well I guess I'm into analyzing more cartoons than animations, so here I am taking a deeper look at themes in Persona 5. Koi! As a sequel to a spin-off of a hugely popular series, famous for its story and theming surrounding its world, Persona 5 is filled with different themes. It is basically a game about the spirit of rebellion. There's a lot to be said about the game's fumbling of important plot and thematic points. Said points is what I wanted to call attention to now, since some of the things that the game does really well is sadly overlooked in the constant dissection of what it does not. The game, among other things, is about self-actualization, system injustice and youth. The main story follows a sort of villain of the week format, where most of the villains are people who take advantage of the society that they live in in order to break the spirit of the law. Each palace or arc in the game has its own smaller themes that they at least try to flesh out, but with this, the overarching theme that spans the entire game is that the main characters has to stand up against the unfairness in society. Despite society being the actual reason for the calamity that the main characters face head on, society as a whole does not change, and they're all aware that calamity might return because of it. But they resolve, each in their own way, to better society by fighting back. It's a startlingly cohesive treatment of the game's core messages and themes, which I find to be extremely relevant in today's day and age. In an era where we have pervasive corruption across society, abuse of power, exploitation of vulnerable minorities, and widespread apathy by the masses at large, Persona 5, which talks about exactly those things and public apathy and lack of engagement. P5 tells the story of the youth, who disenchanted and disillusioned with the status quo, decides to take matters into their own hands. Everything following Futaba's palace is when it's most relevant, from the way it depicts internet trends, manipulation of the public through the internet and social media, Shido's entire rise to power, and the complete lack of interest the public has in Shido confessing. Things like the abuse workers at Akumura Foods are just another representation of something that is less sly due to apathy, which is why there isn't a huge focus put on them specifically, which is the case for the vast majority of the palaces. At the time you go through the palace, the idea is that those issues are resolved by taking the palace owner's heart, but in reality, those issues aren't actually resolved until the public's apathy that leads to those issues being ignored in the first place is addressed, which is kind of the main crux of the plot after Kumara's palace. Oh yeah, I also want to mention how relevant the song's call to action is, in the title track Wake Up Get Up Get Out There, as the song literally is about standing up for yourself, and like, damn, that song's a banger. Wake up, get up, get up there. This song is a true call to action. Yeah, we might have shitty people and shitty things happening around us, abuse of power and so on. I personally found that Persona 5's core themes are very empowering. Yes, things are shit, but we can take charge, we can take control and try to do something about it. As Persona 5 reminds us, if we're part of a society, we don't want to complain about it. Instead, we want to try to do something about it. Granted, Persona 5 was my first Persona game, and yeah, I did enjoy the theming of it. Sure, the story can be a touch silly at times, but really, the good heavily outweighed the bad. But I do want to talk about the bad a little later when I actually conclude the themes. The entire end of the game focuses on the fact that all the people that you supported across the game come together to help fight the injustice of you getting arrested through totally normal means that anybody is capable of. The whole game basically builds to those final moments where all of your confidants are able to stand up for themselves and others rather than keep the peace. As you can see in the ending of the game, while you use your magical powers to summon a big gun and shoot the representation of apathy. Be gone. Shut up. No one cares about you, boy. You think I'm the villain? Go fuck yourself! Time flies, but it's oh so hard to let go. <gasps> oh my god! It slowly comes and it goes. At the end of the day, that's probably not gonna change anything. 
However, what has changed through the game is the people closest to the protagonist. By spending time with them, you help them deal with their own issues. Joker enabled them to overcome said issues in their own life brought to them by their apathy. But keep in mind that you can only become a super powerful savior because of the people themselves are willing to believe in justice. Joker can change all of society, but he has changed enough people's life that they're willing to do something about the real injustice young people in Japan face by using actual activism. His confidants make petitions, gather witnesses, and literally fight back with the basic things that anyone can do yet are hard to come by in Japanese society. That's the real conclusion to the story, and it takes everything that the metaphorical climax represents and puts it into an actionable, believable events that the protagonist himself can do. You know, when I was young, ooh boy. <laughs> Yo. P5 obviously is not perfect. The game has good ideas, but really does nothing with them, and suffers from the fact that its writing boils down to all adults either incompetent or massage twirling masterminds. The only thing that Persona 5 does really well is acknowledging that our generation cares way too much of what other people think online, and that people would much rather bitch online than actually do anything to fix those problems. Persona 5 is very flawed in its execution of the very potent and heavy themes that it specifically sets out to address, like the whole sexualization of Anne. And yeah, there's no denying that its shortages are probably greater than its triumphs. I don't deny that the game is a victim of its dodgy development cycle, I just feel like there are many merits to its storytelling that's often dismissed out of hand. Now I know you're blind, man, but you gotta see this. Very clever. Because of its sweeping generalization like no subtlety, when the whole game is far more nuanced than just the presence or absence of subtlety. Listen, I truly love this game. It is easily one of my favorite games of all time, but the flaws are to be discussed and critiqued. In the topic of themes, Persona 5 falls flat when compared to the other Shin Megami Tensei games, including the rest of the Persona series, but it's undeniably powerful when it hits its mark. Sweet.